What are some of the things you can do with 15 metres of wire as an antenna? Follow me down to the beach to learn more. This is what 15 metres of wire looks like. I've got it wrapped around a sandwich made from pieces of cool flute. If a real estate agent has left some of this behind on a sign that hasn't been picked up for ages, well, there's your free source. Anyway, 15 metres of wire there. I've got another five metres or so of wire here for another purpose. I did a pretty recent video on 20 metres of wire. All the different things you could do with it. Uh, 20 metres of wire, very useful for bands like 40, 20 metres. Uh, maybe a bit higher depending on the configuration. Today I'll talk about what you can do with a 15 metre length. We'll go up the various bands, we'll start at 3.5 megahertz. Our 15 metres is quite a short length, less than a quarter wavelength, somewhere around 3 sixteenths of a wavelength. So it's not going to be very efficient there, but if you don't have any room for more, then you can set it up as an inverted L, or maybe even better, a vertical antenna with some top loading, preferably top loading, centre loading will work, uh, especially if you've got a good radial system, then that can be quite an efficient radiator on 3.5 megahertz. The bandwidth though will be relatively narrow, especially if you want the antenna to be reasonably efficient. So yeah, 3.5 megahertz, either an inverted L, which would be most people, because then you don't need a very tall mast, or if you do have tall masts or trees then setting it up as a vertical preferably with top loading will be okay on 3.5 megahertz uh, we go up a bit to 5 megahertz a band that we don't have in Australia but you do in a lot of overseas countries there 15 meters of wire becomes pretty close to a quarter wavelength so everything that I discussed in the previous video about 20 meters of wire being used on 80 meters as a quarter wavelength, that applies for 15 meters of wire on five megahertz or 60 meters. Um, it will be low impedance. You may be able to get away with connecting it straight into the antenna socket of a transceiver, particularly if it's got an inbuilt antenna coupler, but um, otherwise a, a small matching network and also some radials um, will help you get 15 meters of wire to work efficiently on five megahertz as a quarter wavelength radiator. Go up to seven megahertz and it's a bit more than a quarter wavelength radiator, less than a half wavelength radiator, something like three eighths of a wavelength. 15 meters of wire won't be a resonant antenna on seven megahertz or 40 meters, but it shouldn't present too much of an impedance mismatch, so any reasonable antenna coupler will allow it to operate as an NFED. It again would be okay as a vertical if you're interested in working DX or an inverted L. Uh, but I would suggest if you can on 7 megahertz get a length nearer to 20 meters, uh, 15 meters will also work. At 10 megahertz, this is where 15 meters of wire comes into its own as an effective antenna and there's different configurations. There it's a half wavelength, 15 meters on 30 meter band, which is 10 megahertz. So you can use it for all sorts of things. You can snip it in two, um, each half about seven and a half meters each, and feed it in the center as a half wave dipole. That of course needs coax feed line, but it presents a good 50 to 75 ohm impedance, so that will work fine. Alternatively, as an NFED, an NFED half wave, you can have a pole, maybe six or seven meters tall, in the middle of it, feed it like an NFED inverted V, and that will be a very efficient antenna. It will give you maybe a little omnidirectional, maybe if you were to have it a bit higher, it will be more of a figure eight pattern. Remember, it will be high impedance, so you will need something like an L-match antenna coupler to work 15 meters of wire on the 10 megahertz band. Another option, I haven't actually tried this, but if you were to have an off-center fed dipole, um, so you've got half wavelength on the lowest frequency band, in this case 10 megahertz, if you're at, with off-center fed dipoles, 
you can also get resonances at frequencies that are double, quadruple, etc. So in the case of 15 meters of wire on 10 megahertz of center fed dipole, it would be pretty close to being a resonant on 21 megahertz as well. It's not quite a two to one change in frequency, but it's not far off it. So you should be able to um, have that operate as a dual band antenna on 10 and 21 megahertz. So that could be useful in some applications. Um, you go up even higher, um, we don't have an amateur band at 40 megahertz, so some people experiment there and in some countries you can run low power there. Um, it might work on 40 megahertz as well, I'm not sure about 50 megahertz and higher, but as you go up to these higher frequencies, the radiation pattern splits off into different lobes and uh, then it becomes uh, a bit less predictable. But yeah, if 10 megahertz is your main band of interest, then 15 meters of wire is a good antenna choice for that. And by the way, you can also set it up as an inverted L. Um, an NFED inverted V, I tend to use for portable operating, just needs single support. You could use that same single support if you've got a tree a little bit further down, uh, let's say seven or eight meters away, you could set it up as an inverted L um, both will work fine. 14 megahertz, there it's a three-quarter wavelength antenna, so it will be quite low impedance at the feed point. So especially if you're in a country that has five megahertz, that can be handy because you've got an antenna that's a quarter wavelength on five megahertz or 60 meters and three quarters of a wavelength on 14 megahertz. That low impedance should mean that the antenna coupler in your transceiver should be able to match it okay. So there you've got a dual band antenna on 60 meters and also 20 meters, both presenting low impedance at the feed point. Going up a bit, up to 18 megahertz, 21 megahertz, uh, we'll, go up to, we'll talk about 21 megahertz because this is where you've got an antenna that is about a full wavelength on 21 megahertz, 15 meters, 15 meter band after all and you can do all sorts of things with that. Again, seven and a half meters there, seven and a half meters there. A full wavelength of wire, as it's a 15 meter band. Supported by a mast there, transmitter there. Let us take a seagull's view of this. And thanks to the one that donated this feather. We've got the pole there, transceiver there, the radiation pattern is going to be like this, broadside to the wire, bi-directional, it's vertically polarised, a bit more gain than a half wavelength dipole. If you wanted a little bit more gain and had two masts, then you might go the half square approach, which is 3.75 metres or a quarter wavelength, Half wavelength, 7.5, another 3.75 down here. So full wavelength of wire, a half square on 21 megahertz, good low angle radiator, but the height here isn't all that much. You may actually do better with another type of antenna, uh, especially if you've got a taller mast. Um, haven't done a lot of detailed experiments on that. Another thing you can do with 15 meters of wire without having to break it is a full wavelength loop on 21 megahertz. Here's your quad loop, just under four meters aside. You will need two supports. If you want horizontal polarization, you feed it there or if you want vertical polarization, you feed it there. Your impedance at either of these feed points will be somewhere around 100, 150 ohm. So one option is to have, say, a quarter wavelength of 75 ohm kayaks. It's actually a bit less than a quarter wavelength because of velocity factor. And then you connect your 50 ohm kayaks there. That will provide a matching section. Um, to transform your 100 ohm approximately down to 
50 ohm. This being a single band antenna, of course. 21 megahertz, full wavelength of wire around. You could feed it with open wire feed line. You know, if that feed line is like 300, 400 ohms, whatever, uh, with a, a balanced antenna coupler at the transceiver end, that will be okay. That will work on several bands. If you've only got a single support, then you might go for a full wavelength delta loop like this. Again, one wavelength perimeter, so perfect match for your 15 meters of wire on 21 megahertz. If you want horizontal polarization, again, you feed it down here. If you want vertical polarization, then strictly speaking, you feed it about there. Um, these sides are one third of a wavelength each, and the feed point here is one quarter of a wavelength down from the top. So it's about 3.75 meters of wire along there, and there's about 1.25 meters of wire there approximately. Now you could feed it in the corner, but the radiation characteristics won't be quite so good. So for vertical polarization, you're better off to feed it um, about here. Quarter wavelength down from the apex. Advantage of this type of antenna compared with the loop over there is that you can just have a single support. If you do want something that's a low angle radiator on 28 megahertz, then have a look at my videos where I talked about zigzag antennas. In this case, you can have five meters going up, another five meters going down, another five meters going up. Uh, that will give you a low angle of radiation on 28 megahertz, though you have to consider that unless you've got some really tall poles, the height isn't very good. So the, um, that antenna may or may not be the best, but at least it gives you vertical polarization at a low angle of radiation. So it's something worth trying on 28 megahertz. So that's our look at 15 meters of wire, a versatile length for multiple bands. Don't worry too much about it being resonant or not being resonant and have a good antenna coupler with you and be aware that particularly on the lower HF bands, you might have limitations in relation to the need to have ground systems, radials, counterpoises, whatever. And on the higher HF bands, particularly on 10 meters, the radiation pattern may break up and become not so good. But in the middle of all that, uh, between about 10 and 24 megahertz, 15 meters of wire is a very versatile length to be using for various single element HF antennas. Hope you found it useful and let me know how you go with your 15 meter length of wire in the comments. Do you want to get the most from your portable QRP operating? Good antennas is a great place to start. Find out how I succeed with my two books, hand carried QRP antennas and more hand carried QRP antennas. The big sellers with favorable reviews from all around the world. To learn more, visit vk3ye.com or search the titles on Amazon.